Mount Everest has seen the tragic loss of over 300 climbers in recent history, with an estimated 200 bodies remaining on the mountain to date. You can really call it a graveyard of climbers. At heights where even taking a few steps takes great strength, using a pickaxe to free a body seems crazy, let alone howling one back down. I know it sounds against ethics, but life's harsh and especially above 8,000 meters, it becomes even more cruel. Today, I will tell you about one of the points on the highest mountain on earth that is infamous because this point has the dead body of a climber who ironically reminds us of the deadliest single day event in Everest history. The climber's body got this nickname because of the green cofflatch boots that are clearly visible amidst the white snow. Now the question arises: when was it first seen? The tale of green boots on Everest gained attention within the global mountaineering community when British filmmaker and climber Matt Dickinson recorded the first video footage of the climbers final resting place in May 1996. This unsettling video footage was also used in the Brian Blessed documentary Summit Fever. The video revealed a human body lying curled with hands covering the face and was very sensitive to watch. Over the years, green boots became a common term as all the expeditions from the north side encountered the body of a climber curled up in the limestone Alcov cave. The cave is at 27,890 feet and is littered with oxygen bottles. It is below the first step on the path. Clearly, Everest not only claims bodies but also preserves them. Once the bodies are frozen, they become attached to the mountain and stay there permanently. Now let us find out who is this climber called Green Boots. Green Boots is widely believed to be an Indian climber, Sivan Paljor. Paljor was part of a larger team who were all wearing green cofflatch boots during expedition in 1996. Paljor was born on April 10, 1968 in a small village called Sakti which is located in the Ladakh area of India. Paljor was the middle child out of the total of five siblings. He was an introverted man who, as the oldest son, felt responsible to support for his financially struggling family. Paljor decided to enter the tourism sector, enlisting in the army to pursue a career in driving. After dropping out of school, he joined the Indo-Tibetan Border of Police almost immediately. As a member of Indo-Tibetan Border of Police, Paljor specialized in high altitude landscapes and throughout his time there, he scaled a number of mountain peaks. The Indo-Tibetan Border Police assembled a team of mountaineers in 1996 to reach Mount Everest Peak via the Northern Route. It was decided that Sivan Paljor would be a member of the group. He made the decision to keep his family in the dark initially, but nonetheless they were finally informed. However, despite his loved ones encouraging him not to go, he insisted on doing it since he was convinced that reaching the summit of Everest would benefit the family. Before they said their final goodbyes, his younger brother Thinali Namgyal, a monk at the time, blessed his older brother. He was the last member of the family to have seen Paljur before he left for the summit. On the unfortunate day of May 10, 1996, the group started their journey, unaware of what was waiting for them. The issues for them started the same morning when the team got behind schedule due to a strong wind and then they overslept. They did not set out from Camp 6 until 8 in morning rather than 3.30 as planned. Given the extremely tardy start, they decided to move further up the mountain to fix ropes rather than attempt the summit, since doing so would guarantee descending through the death zone in the dark, the area above 8,000 meters where climbers often lose their life. A blizzard caught this team of six climbers, including Paljor, Morob and Smalla. Other teammates decided to return back, but the trio chose to move ahead to the top, which they managed to achieve as they radioed their expedition leader to confirm their arrival on top. Definitely, it was big news for everyone. But as they say, once you reach the top of the summit, your journey actually starts afterwards. The journey back down. Tragically, contact was lost between them and none of the three climbers managed to return to the high camp. 
Paljor and his partners were young, strong and experienced, but Everest presents multitudes of ways to take the life of even the most well-prepared climber. Falls, avalanche, exposure and much more. Sudden death from heart attacks, strokes, an irregular heartbeat, asthma or the exacerbation of other pre-existing conditions is not uncommon and a lack of oxygen can trigger acute pulmonary or cerebral edema, a life-threatening condition that occurs when blood vessels begin leaking fluid into the lungs or brain. When Mark Jenkins, a journalist, author and adventurer in Wyoming was on Everest in 2012, five people died on a single day. Sherpas, he interviewed, told him that most of the fatalities belonged to those clients who had refused to turn around. Your Sherpa will tell you, you are too slow, you have to turn around or you will die, he says. And some people don't. Mountains don't kill people, people kill themselves, he says. The disappearance of Paljor and his team sparked controversy when speculation arose that a team of Japanese climbers, unaware of the missing Indians, might have encountered them and failed to assist. These allegations were later clarified by the Japanese government, revealing no ill intent on the part of the Japanese team. The Climbers Code of Ethics, issued by the International Climbing and Mountaineering Federation, specifies clearly Helping someone in trouble has absolute priority over reaching goals we set for ourselves in the mountain. Most climbers take this to their heart. Saving one life is more important than summiting Everest 100 times, says Sareb Jangbo Sherpa, the first person to climb all eight of Nepal's 8,000 meter peaks and the first to summit K2 twice in one year. We can always go back and summit, but a lost life never comes back. There are actually some other infamous points on Everest. The mountain has claimed the lives of several climbers, including notable figures like Scott Fisher and Rob Hall. Another fallen climber who earned a nickname Sleeping Beauty is Frances Astaneuf, who died in 1998 during an unsuccessful descent from Everest after summiting. Her body remained where she fell and was visible until 2007, when it was ceremonially hidden from view. Famous Rainbow Valley As much as it sounds so beautiful as you pronounce Rainbow Valley, the story behind the name is extremely disturbing. Located on the Northeast Ridge Route, the Rainbow Valley is a landmark during the Everest expedition full of dead bodies of climbers. The question is, why do they call it a rainbow valley? Well, the answer is simple, it's a metaphor. The area is covered with dead bodies, brightly colored down jackets and expedition gear. That's how it got its name, Rainbow Valley. It's a small portion, deep down in the corner, not like a valley as you imagine. Yet another named corpse is that of Hanelor Schmatz, who with a prominent position on the south route earned the moniker the German women. She summited in 1979 but died at 80,000 meters during her descent. She remained there for many years but was eventually blown further down the mountain. In 2006, British mountaineer David Sharp was found in a hypothermic state in Green Boots Cave by climber Mark Inglis and his party. Inglis continued his ascent after radioing for advice on how to help Sharp which he was unable to provide. Sharp died of an extreme cold some hours later. Approximately three dozen other climbers would have passed by the dying man that day. It has been suggested that those who noticed him mistook Sharp for green boots and therefore they paid little attention. David Sharp's death made headlines, especially because people globally believed that there were high chances that he could have been saved if not mistaken for green boots. Now the final question that arises, is Green Boots still on Mount Everest? Actually, contrary to the popular belief, Green Boots has continued to be a part of Everest landscape over the past 25 years since the fatal climb in 1996. His body in 2014 went missing, presumably it's buried or someone might have taken it. His family was heartbroken when they heard about it. Nobody saw Green Boots between 2014 to 2017. 
However, in 2017, it became visible again with more rocks surrounding the body. The body is still in the same spot as it is. Sivang Paljo's dead body, up to now, is serving as a trail maker map for those who are seeking to conquer the world's highest mountain from its north face. When I was researching on this topic, one question came to me. Do they really remove bodies from Everest? Well, next possible question might be, why don't they remove the body and deliver it to their families? It's not as easy as we might imagine. Anyone who died high up in the mountains knows that it's almost impossible to recover the body because of the extreme weather. The helicopter can't fly over or stay on hold for search and rescue because of the strong winds. It has to be a human team to recover the body. But the question is, who on earth is willing to risk their lives to recover the dead body? Likely, no one. That's how the dead bodies are piling up, creating a colorful graveyard with their clothes and giving it its name, Rainbow Valley. Some privileged people, however, their bodies have been recovered from the Everest with over 70,000 USD dollars. But this is not something every family or their insurance company can afford. The cost might increase depending on how severe the situation is and what additional sources are needed. Nearly 5,000 climbers have stepped on top of Mount Everest and more than 300 of them have died since 1924, based on Himalayan database 2019, which is below 1% of the death rate. The death ratio on Mount Everest was as high as 2.2% between 1970s and 7080s. But as the year passed, the death rate came down to 1% in 2019. The story of Paljor, aka Green Boots, tells us that on Everest or any other mountain, you have to follow mountain safety guidelines. Don't be overconfident and always listen to the mountain guides and know when to turn back. This tragic incident had an impact on the climbing community. It has become a cautionary tale, often discussed among climbers, and his death has been used as an example of the dangers of climbing Everest. What are your views on this video? Let me know in the comment section and thanks for watching.